What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving on into the Iron Oath. This is an open world sandbox mercenary company game a la Battle Brothers, only this one is presented equally as bloody and equally as violent and equally as difficult, but this one is done in just absolutely sterling pixel art. So we're going to dive on in today and take a look at the demo that's currently available via the Steam Festival. If after watching this you wanted to check it out for yourself, you can look down below in the description. It'll be available down there for your perusal. And then on top of that, you can also take a look and see my Discord and my Twitch stream. Just in case you wanted to hang out with me live and pick my brain about any questions I might have concerning, or any questions you might have, I guess. I have many questions, but most of them are not going to be things that can be answered by strangers on the internet. Uh, you can ask me whatever questions you might have about any indie games or anything else that's been coming and going on the channel, there. Uh, let's get going because we've got 25-30 minutes to spend. So this is the Iron Oath. We've arrived at the first town. So the game, it does start you out with a lengthy prologue. And I did record the prologue, like the beginning part of the game, but you don't really get to see any of the mercenary mechanics in doing that. And so anyways, I felt like the video wasn't very good. So we're re-recording from right here where I just got done with the prologue. At the moment, we have a mercenary company. We have a number of people inside of our party. Uh, I don't know if any of them are fatigued or whatever. It looks like we have one person who's fatigued for two days. But at the moment, we have Yurik Redwater who is a level 4 pyro lancer. That's exactly what it sounds like. This game is like Battle Brothers, except that it's high magic. Uh, so, like, this game has lots of spell casty bits. It has lots of guys running around with swords that are on fire. Stuff like that. And a pyro lancer is exactly what you think it sounds like. It's a guy with a lance that's on fire, and he kills people with it. Uh, we have a guardian that's basically a paladin. We have Harold Ashfirth. Uh, this guy is a pugilist, so he punches people to death and actually does it in a very cool Dragon Ball Z kind of way. Uh, we have Lambert Brickman, who is a stormcaller, who basically pulls together like a Mortal Kombat thing and is just like, bam, 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 and then explodes people's heads with lightning like fatality. And so anyways, these are the four guys that we currently have available at the moment, which is a good thing because you only need four people in order to do an adventuring party. There are other menus and stuff around. We've got like weapons we can slot on in. We've got our reputation with the noble houses, with the cities, with the factions, so on and so forth. These, me these menus down here, I assume this one is for crafting. Uh, but we can't craft in this demo. I think this one right here is for like building up the camp or something and getting like better campsites for training and things of that nature. And then we also have our company history, which obviously I've named our guys the Cash Falcons because that's what we're out here to do. We're out here to stack cash and fly through the sky. Uh, because we have people that are tired, I'm going to go ahead and we will rest for a day here at the inn. We could pick up some more mercenaries. But I'm not convinced we actually need the mercenaries in order to get going. Uh, nonetheless, we do have mercenaries in here. There's pugilists, stormcallers, huntresses, valkyries. They all have different classes and they all do different things and they all have kind of a different function inside of combat. But we're kind of full up right now, so like why take on people that we don't need to take on, you know? Uh, let's take a look at everybody's equipment and kind of see where they're at. Uh, so, Yurik Redwater, what's your gear look like? So, he's got a spear, and he's got some lamellar. Good. Uh, we've got Theogrita Browning. She's got a sword, and she's got an armor. We might want to pick her up like a shield or something. Uh, Lambert has himself a staff, and he has himself an armor, so that's good. And then Ashfirth has hand wraps and some armor. So, like, largely, we're okay right there. I think the only thing we really need to pick up is, like, a shield just for the extra defense and the extra evasion. Might be kind of helpful along the way. There is a decorative wand, uh, so we could pick that up for our guy. Might be an option. There's also some pretty cool coats of plates and things here, but they're quite expensive. So I don't know if they're going to be worth the pickup. Yeah. Let's go ahead and I think I'll take the shield. And I think that's about all I'm going to take for right now. I mean, there is an argument to be made that we could slap some lamellar on our paladin. But like, eh, do we really need to do that? I mean, I'm trying to keep my expenditures tight. And so anyways, we've also got to pay wages on these guys yearly. Otherwise, they abandon me, just like everyone else in my life. And so, like, maybe I'll keep money around so that I can inspire some jingly loyalty. Uh, there's her shield. So that should help out with defense. It looks like she's got about 
18 defense right now. Not too bad. Your gear does have durability, so that's going to be a primary economic sink is that your gear does break down over time. I assume that you're going to be able to build facilities later on in the game that allow you to repair your stuff. But for right now, the system is actually pretty decent. I don't hate it. Uh, when you go into a dungeon, you don't lose durability until the end of the dungeon. And so, like... From what I can tell, that means you always enter into the dungeon with the usage of your items, and then at the end it'll break on you, and then you go back to town and, like, repair it or whatever. But it seems to be going okay. Oh, you can actually customize these little guys, too, just in case you wanted to. Nice. That's kind of badass. We can give her, like, different outfits and stuff. She is kind of paladin-y. Maybe we should make her gold. I feel like gold is the better color for a paladin. All right. So, the storyline up to here. Our mercenary company was betrayed from within, we were murdered, all slaughtered, and there's only four of us left. Just like in Battle Brothers, we need to rebuild, we need to reform, and we need to get things back together. As of right now, it's locked, but the game is a sandbox, so you are going to be allowed to play at your own leisure when the game comes out. But as of right now, we just have this one tutorial quest that it wants me to do to get back on our feet. So let's go ahead and do it. Alright, so the quest is basically this. I'm gonna, this game is very long-winded, it has lots of text, it has lots of writing, and it has lots of reading. That's good, it helps build out the world, but since we're doing kind of like a first impressions video right now, I sort of figured that I'm gonna skip over a lot of that stuff so that you guys can see maximum gameplay along the way. And then once you guys have seen the gameplay, you know, you can experience it for yourself with all the flavor text. But I'll give you a brief synopsis. Uh, the guards of this town, they are aware that there is a train full of refugees coming that are trying to escape the Scourge. This game has an apocalyptic event that happens every, like, 30 years, which actually is three times as long as it takes for every single modern world economic collapse. And so anyways, every 30 years a dragon awakens and he breathes, like, a whole bunch of vape lasers on the world and, like, wrecks everything. And that's happening right now. So the undead are awakening. Vape Dragon is very upset with all of us. There's refugees everywhere. Uh, they're supposed to be getting refugees arriving here, but they haven't arrived. So we got to go and see what happened to them. They had a military detachment with them. But we haven't heard back from the military detachment, obviously. So there's not really a whole lot for us to do except for like leave town and go see if we can knock this baby beginner quest out. Everybody's rested. Everybody's good. Oh, 45 days until they are fully rested. I don't know if I want to sit in the inn for 45 days. I was going to say, that's a considerable amount of sitting around in the inn. And in fact, I'm kind of glad that it didn't let me do that. Uh, with regards to the UI, we've got our money up here. We've got our renown. We've got our company upgrade points. We have how many people we currently have in our party. We've got the date, which is especially important because there is like a payday in this game and you will have to pay people. I don't know what all these do. Oh, it's a town information menu that tells you all their loyalties and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Don't know what any of these buttons do. Ah, I can camp like kind of outside the town too, I guess. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's go see if we can find these refugees. And there they are. Love this world map. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. You guys, I think, are really going to like the pixel art for this game once we get into it. Uh, this first dungeon is really, really difficult. This is not an easy game. This is very much a game that is barking up the same tree as Battle Brothers, where, like, they want you to suffer. They want you to accept that people are going to die and that you're going to lose characters. Uh, so permadeath is definitely in effect. The game is very difficult. It's very hard. It's very tactical. So I apologize, apologize if I play poorly today, but my job is not to play the game well. It's to let you know that the game actively exists and is available for you to grab. So, like, you know, a little bit of distinction on my work there. 13 days to go to Flame Shark Cave. Let's go. Dooba dooba doo, I'm rolling down the street, my money's costing me a fortune. Okay, so we found the refugees, and they were indeed being chased by slavering undead. Uh, the town guards, they all said that they would stay behind so that we could take the refugees into a cave which comes out near town and bring them into town. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we get to buy provisions at the beginning of our run, just like in Darkest Dungeon. I highly recommend that you do that, or you're going to regret your entire life and all of your decisions. I suggest healing potions, but you can pick and choose and bring what you want. You will pick up more loot along the way while you're going through the dungeon, but healing potions, in my experience, have been the most useful thus far. And so anyways, you can get big potions, little potions. If you don't use them, you get refunded at the end of the dungeon. So that's a cool little feature. Uh, let's venture forth.
All right, so welcome to the dungeon. The dungeon is procedural. It is generated randomly. And if you've ever played Warhammer 40k Mechanicus, this game's dungeon system works the exact same way. It's literally the exact same system. Uh, you move on a tile, and time goes by. Every time this wheel fills in, so you have 12 turns, uh, you get a negative status effect that affects the dungeon for the rest of your run. Uh, sort of to... Sort of to address the fact that the dungeon is waking up and aware of the fact that you are in there. And so anyways, if you've played Mechanicus, you'll know exactly how that works. It's the same way here. There will be battles along the way. There will be problems. There will be travails, but we'll try to get through them all. What you need to watch out for is people's HP and people's spirit. When their spirit gets down too low, basically they have kind of like a darkest dungeon mental break. I haven't had anybody get down to zero, so I can't tell you exactly what that entails, but I can tell you that the game really doesn't want your guys' spirit to get down to zero. Let's check this dungeon out and see if we can clear the way for the refugees. So far, so good. Nothing bad has happened. Ah, we've got a battle. All right. In noble battle, we shall face off against the foe. Um, so this battle is going to be a problem no matter what we do. Uh, so this little phase cat right here, he has a teleport, and he has an AoE silence. And so we're pretty much just going to have to fight this entire battle more or less using auto attacks. Uh, because his AoE silence is really, really bad, and there are attacks of opportunity, and it's kind of difficult to get away from him once he closes. And he always goes first, and he always goes for your mage, so there's not going to be a whole lot of ways to solve that problem. Uh, let me see if I can trick out the AI for just a second. Uh, if I had deployed a little closer, I guess we could have gone first. Um, yeah, delay your turn. It's fine. So there goes the phase cat. He did the dead zone thing. He's going to teleport over to the other side. Wizard Lady's going to run up, and it looks like she's going to blast Yurik for a little bit of damage right there. Those guys aren't going to close the gap for a little bit, so we're mostly okay. I'm going to move over to here so that we have the flanking bonus, and then we are going to use a blinding strike on this guy so that he has a very high chance of missing. That guy's going to move up and attack us. Oh, he's got an impalement ability. Lovely. All right, let's kill him then. I'm going to channel a lightning blast on him. And then with these guys right here, we want to get out of the dead zone so that we can use our abilities. Uh, I highly recommend you use your abilities. Do not... So there's always the risk here that you are going to save your abilities for later because you think it's not going to get worse. Um, you're not going to get to that later part that gets worse unless you use your abilities incredibly liberally in this game. Uh, so I'm going to step over to here. And we're going to Dragon Ball Z the hell out of that guy. And then apparently I got a double turn. So we'll just finish him off right there. Wizard's going to move up. And she's going to miss, actually. He got a big dodge off. He's going to lightning blast that guy back down into the ground. Farewell, demon. Enjoy your trip back to hell. I don't know if I want to go after that lady first. Or if I want to go after this guy first. I've yet to decide. Uh, I've yet to decide. I think we'll go after the, the caster first. I think we can drop her no problem. We'll just go auto attacks for a second because I think we can finish her off. There we go. Looking good. So he's going to put a bleed on my warrior right there. My paladin is going to heal my warrior and take that off of him. There are permanent wounds in this game, and there are, like, debilitating injuries. So your guys can get, like, a torn rotator cuff, or they can get a swollen shut eye. Uh, those sorts of things. We'll go ahead and light this guy up. He doesn't seem that stiff. So I think he'll go down pretty quickly, and that's our first battle resolved. Uh, we got a free bandage, we got some demon's blood, which is loot, and then we got the tooth of a null beast. I think later on they're going to allow you to use those items to craft and, like, make new stuff. Um, but I can't say that with any resolution or, like, with any certainty, but it seems like they're leaning that way. What's this way? You come to a narrow corridor with an iron gate in the way. Oh, we don't have any tools to pick the lock. Otherwise, I bet you it's going to loop back around. We're taking, like, the long route right now. Yep, that's exactly what's about to happen. There's our first debuff, misplaced provisions. That's actually not the worst one you can get, in all honesty. Uh, there's some really bad debuffs in this game that add, like, extra health to the enemies, that add, like, elites. Like, so I will take the loss of one health potion. Uh, willingly. One health potion? Not bad. I, I can take that. Uh, we've got another Null Beast fight over here. 
I'm going to say we do the exact same thing we did last time and fall back so that they can't close on the first turn. He's going to get the first turn again, obviously, but we'll just delay his turn. Okay, not too bad. Probably manageable. Go ahead and delay your turn, too. I want to see what they do with the rest of their troops. You kind of want to play really carefully in this game because it's super easy to get in over your head. Um, go ahead and just throw out a little zappy. I don't really have much else to play with, so we'll, we'll go ahead and throw out a zap right there. My guess is he's going to move to one of those two. I do have an ability that puts down a booby trap, so I guess I'll do that. Um, you are actually kind of free to move in and engage this guy if you want. I wonder if I can kick him into that hole right there. I think I can. Unfortunately, it doesn't kill him. He just pops back up and loses his turn. For right now, I'm going to have you channel a shield on the wizard. Because they really like to focus on wizards. Uh, kick him into the hole again. I mean, there's no reason not to. We can basically just perma-stun him down here. So the phase beast went around that right there. Little bit of damage being thrown out. He stepped on the bomb, which is good. All right, so wizard. Let's get rid of the phase cat first. The phase cat dodged. That's really, really terrible. I hate everything about that. Uh, we'll go ahead and light him up with some flames. For you, we're going to need to drop this guy at some point, but he's sturdy. Like, he's got high defense, and he's got, like, a whole, whole bunch of health. So, like, I think we're going to have to kind of, like, dogpile him. I'm going to bring the paladin over here. I'm going to go with cleansing light just to see if that works against a demon a little bit better. It doesn't look like it really did. Uh-oh. What does that do? Hmm. My heart is full of concerns right now. Let's see if we can finish off the phase cat and then maybe dogpile the rest of these dudes. Um, corruption is on the ground. I don't want to deal with corruption, so I'm going to move over to here. And then I think I'm going to... Yeah, let's do the let's do the cool there we go. We'll do the we'll do the cool Dragon Ball Z attacks. Ow. Apparently he detonates. I actually had no idea he had that ability. I've fought a couple of those and I've never seen him do that before, otherwise I would have kind of prepared for it. Our hand got bruised. Great. What does that do? Receive two percent of damage dealt and critical hits deal less damage. Yikes. Alright, well, rip. Uh, we'll go over here, and let's go ahead and blind her so that she can't see to hit us. We'll try to finish off the phase cat, finally. I'm going to bring my spear guy over here. He can't fully close the gap, but he can kind of get there. And then you start coming in through from behind. Okay. Not too bad. Go ahead and heal yourself up. Have him move up over to here, and we'll go ahead and drop a little bit of the old crackly lightning energy on this witch. Uh, he can't end his turn on top of that, otherwise bad things happen, so like move over to there. There we go. The witch is now finally down. Uh, we got a key, which apparently unlocks something. Probably that gate that we walked past. Uh, we can upgrade people's stats, so this game does have RPG mechanics to go along with the strategy that's on offer. Uh, with the RPG mechanics, it's fairly simple. Basically, it tells you what stats to put in for the various classes. You only have about six abilities, but each of these abilities has a full tech tree behind it that you develop with your upgrade points. And so there's actually more moving parts here than are initially obvious when you start playing. Uh, that'll give him evade. I definitely need more evade. The best thing is just damage that you never take in the first place. I love this ability. We can increase the dash range, or we can make it cleave if there's other people nearby. Let's do the cleave and a damage bonus. That sounds pretty good to me, and then we'll confirm it. Lambert has also leveled up. He can get crit, accuracy, or attack. 
let's go ahead and let's go for a little bit more accuracy, I think. Um, I really like his channel lightning spell, so I'm going to make it channel faster and have an extra charge. With her, I want her to... Let's raise your defense since you are kind of a tanky character. And we're going to focus on her heal. I'm going to make it give people radiance, even though I don't know what that means. And then I'm going to increase the amount of charges on her heal. Sounds good. And then we'll pick up the key. We've got a health potion right there. Things are looking good. I should be able to patch people up after this fight. The real question becomes, if we go back over here, is it like faster or slower? We did get the key, but we're running out of time. I'm going to go for it. I've never gotten a key in the dungeon before. Uh, I am going to play a potion on you. And I'm going to play a bandage on you so that her wound no longer continues to get worse. It stays kind of at the same status that it was. We can camp if you want to, but there is the risk of being attacked whenever you camp. Uh, we'll open the key. There it goes. And so hopefully this is not just like a treasure room. Now we've got another debuff. Heavy eyes. We should rest soon. The next time you camp, everyone is forced to rest with no lookout. Yikes. Hopefully we pick the right direction here. A lot of tired souls back there. I think it'd be wise if we found a place to camp for the night. You don't want anybody to collapse on us. Our own crew, worst of all. Okay. I'm not going to make camp yet. I'm not out of abilities. Another fight. Another phase beast. All right. Beautiful. Um, let's just keep everybody together for right now. We'll keep the band together, and we'll just start it on off. Ah, if you block his teleport, he can't do it. I was wondering if that formation would work right there. I'd prefer to avoid any further damage going out to my characters. She's silenced, so we'll focus on the phase beast for a minute. It looks like he's going to pull up in the back and go after my mage. Yeah, the AI loves going after mages. I'm going to hit him with the heavy blow because I can't risk him exploding right now. If he explodes, it's just not ideal. Um, I'll probably go for a flame strike on you. That works. I'll take it. Uh, in the case of you, how do I want to deal with you? I'll probably just try to get some DPS off, I guess. There's the big hit. So he's not down yet, but he's trying. He's got whip damage going on. Let's finish off the phase cat. Please no dodge. No whammies, por favor. Okay, she blocked him because he's been brainwashed by the succubus. Is he getting ready to explode? I didn't see what he was going to do. What's he doing right now? Static charge. Um, I don't know if he's going to blow up or not. We may want to like... Just like... Oh, that kicks my guy too? Oh, weak, dude. I didn't realize that it had like a 180 on it. Yeah, that's what I kind of felt like was going to happen. Even considering the fact that I damaged my own guys... I'm okay with it, because he took 80 damage right there. We would have took way, way, way more damage if we had just sat there and ate that hit. Uh, get on over here, and let's start killing off the witch. She's pretty wispy. Alas, she is not dead. You move down to there, and then move over to here. I couldn't get over here without moving through the booby trap, so... You gonna wake up sometime soon, sleeping beauty? Huh? You wanna you wanna wipe the sleepy dust out of your eyes? Just a little bit? Just give it the old scrub of Roonies. I was gonna say, if we can finish that right there, it would be ideal. Oh good, we got health potions and spirit potions and stuff. Probably a good plan to throw some spirit potions on the old paladin. She's not looking especially spirited right now. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put that on her for the extra 10 spirit. 
we are going to have to camp pretty soon. I think we'll cast a heal on, like, the most busted people. And then, yeah, I think it's time to camp. Hopefully we don't get attacked, though. All right, so while you are camping, we have a 30% chance to get attacked. We can't put anybody on lookout because of this little debuff down here. Uh, but we can burn incense to help out a little bit. And I do suggest that we do. Let's restore vitality. Our rest will be short. I think this will be okay. We're going to take another debuff on our wheel, unfortunately, before this gets any better. Maybe better off for Battle Hardened, actually. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. How many charges do I have left? None. All right, let's camp it. Hopefully, we don't get interrupted. Uh, we didn't get interrupted, as far as I can tell. We got deadly contraptions. Traps deal double damage. Okay, I don't even know if there's any traps in this dungeon. You jolt awake, disturbed by a far-off noise that you can't be certain it wasn't part of a dream. You sit upright and glance at the fire. Now embers. Your companions are asleep. Eh, ignore it. Uh, we are under attack, so we actually did get attacked in our sleep. Like I said, this is an absolutely brutal game that cuts you precisely zero slack. Um, this game is nasty. Like, it's really, really, like, I don't know. I've, I've run the first dungeon a couple of times, and it's hard. It's uh, very, very difficult. Uh, the enemies have pushes, they have pulls, they have CCs, they have AoEs. I mean, the enemy's repertoire of abilities that they have is stunning. Like, they have loads and loads of ways to ruin your life. Go ahead and just use basic abilities for right now, I guess. I don't think we really have much else going for us. Can I scoot her over by one more? I don't think I can. Uh, we'll go for a blinding swing, I guess. Maybe we can blind him. I kind of need him to go take care of her, so that's what I'm going to do. Like, we can't let her just, like, sit back there and spam all kinds of debuffs and stuff on us. A little bit more damage off right there. We've got one attack going out. One attack going out. That's okay. We can suffer through it. She took an attack of opportunity just to get away. Which actually really, really surprises me. Normally the, AI, normally the AI is pretty good at avoiding attacks of opportunity. Wonderfully timed dodge right there. What is that thing? What does that do? I don't know what it does. It's gone now, though, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. So, all for the best, I guess? Hopefully she burns to death on the next turn. Uh, I would like to move to right here, and we're going to stun this guy by kicking him into the hole. There we go. I do wish that the holes were actually, like, deadly. Like, if they fall into the hole, they should just be, like, eliminated, basically. But we saved ourselves an attack right there by using an environmental effect. And so that's a good start. A dodge while stunned. Oh boy, that's going to vary things up a little bit. Uh, because we have limited charges on our ability, every single dodge represents kind of like a resource that we're running out of right now. Like basically the abilities that we're using now that get dodged or whatever, we don't have access to those abilities later. I had hoped that by camping, maybe we could restore a little bit of that. But we got caught up in... Oh, oh boy. Uh, we got we got caught up in another one, and so unfortunately, man, the dodges, they just don't seem to stop, do they? <laughs> My mind is officially breaking right now from all the dodges that we've gone through with this fight. It's a tough game. Not an easy game to really get a handle on. There's a health potion right there. That'll help. Not an easy game to get a handle on for a number of reasons. Uh, just largely due to the fact that you've got limited charges on your abilities... Uh, the enemies dodge and they block just like you do. On top of that, like, they've got CCs, they've got stuns, they've got mind controls. 
they bring an actual for like a starter dungeon. These enemies are really bringing some some heavy duty ordnance into this fight. And so anyways, we're probably going into a boss fight pretty soon and I don't feel crazy prepared for it. I think we may actually run out of kind of supplementary abilities in order to keep ourselves running, but who knows? Let's give it our best shot, I guess. Uh, as the mission drags on, you find it difficult to have maintained proper discipline and formation. You now don't get deployment, and your troops are scattered on the battlefield. Yikes. That's going to be a minor inconvenience. That one's going to make this considerably more difficult. Oh, buddy. Don't know what we're going to do. Uh, there's the final battle right there. Boss is pretty gnarly. We've got one heal left. Pretty much everything is falling apart. Our first expedition has been a marked failure. Failure. I think, like, my first job... As kind of like a, a mercenary company leader, I don't think that I've done a very good job at instilling confidence thus far. I think we're in trouble. Yeah, it's that. It, it's this guy right here you gotta watch out for. If I pull through this, I will be intensely shocked. I'm gonna kind of wait on my turn. What does that do? All incoming attacks get extra damage. Foof. Um, yeah, just get into formation, I guess. We'll blind this lady up so that she has less of a chance to hit us. I'm going to blow this guy into the hole. Oh, it didn't blow them into the hole. Weak. Okay, well, it did get them off of my mage, which is like a secondary thing that I'm okay with. So wildfire. Three cells in a row, summons a fire, and the one nearest the fire spreads to the next cell every three turns, lasting for five turns. Yeah. Let's just go for the big hits. Infernal pillar. I need things to be dead. That's how I feel about that. I know this guy has an AoE, so I'm kind of worried about running up on him. But let's do it anyways. Let's YOLO it, dude. All right. So I would like to do Fists of Fury. Yeah, step to right there. Maybe put some damage on him. Yeah, that looks good. That's all right. I'll take that. Oh, yeah, he teleports. There's really... No point, I guess, trying to lock him down. Yeah. I'm going to heal my spear guy, I guess, with my final heal. I'm going to have you channel your last big bada boom on him because he's going to self-destruct. And I feel like that's going to solve my problem to begin with. So, like, he's, he's, he's a limited duration problem right now. Whereas I'm looking for the solutions to, like, long-term problems. Nice little hit right there. I'm going to try to keep the DPS running on that guy. Oh no, dude, my mage. I have no idea what these do, by the way. Like, literally anything could happen right here. I don't know. Uh, maybe put a shield on you and the mage, since I don't know exactly what those things are going to do. Get an attack of opportunity from right there. Uh, I guess go ahead and light him on fire. I mean, if we can keep the DPS focused, I think we'll be all right. That shield is going to block the next attack that they take from, like, anybody, so that'll work. Uh, kick him off you. Uh, it looks like we take damage from being adjacent to them, maybe? It's hard to say. Well, shoot, it looks like it locked up on me. Yikes. All right, well... This is the demo for Iron Oath. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it appears to have locked up on me. I have, like, no interactions that I can do with anything right now. I can't open any menus. I can't click any buttons. I can't really do much. 
It is a demo. The game's not out yet. Would have liked to have seen it not lock up on me, though, in the last five minutes or so. Especially when this may have been the first time that I was able to beat the first dungeon after a couple of tries. So, like, I was starting to smell victory in my nostrils, and now that has been yoinked away from me. So I guess with the smell of victory slowly wafting away, I'll leave you with this. I like the game. I think it's got a great art style. I really like the pixel art and sort of the Dragon Ball Z-inspired pugilist fighting. I think the pixel art is great. The soundtrack is great. I'm looking forward to checking this game out because I love Mercenary Company games. Uh, however, we did have a crash right here at the end of the demo. So obviously that's going to throw a little bit of water on my flames of passion. Nonetheless, I am looking forward to checking out a more developed version of the game as time goes along. I usually expect stuff like this to happen with demos, and in fact, this week, during the festival, I have re-recorded many, many, many of these episodes many, many times due to crashes and bugs and things of that nature. So it's not outside my wheelhouse of things that I've been, you know, expecting. I'm not super surprised. But either way, we got a full-length episode done. Hopefully you guys like the Iron Oath. I will see you guys later. Thank you for stopping on in. Take care, and that's about all I got for you, everybody. I'll see y'all next time.